Hey, youngster, come here. My name's Henry. Thank you for taking care of me here. My name's Peshek, and I'm the miller here. You've already met my niece, Teresa. She took care of you for two whole weeks while you were in limbo. And talking of you being at death's door, while you were lying here, you worked up quite a bill with the blood letter, who came now and again to keep you alive with his potions. That quack doesn't come cheap. I paid him what I could, but I still, that is, you still owe him. I see. Well, it's better to be in debt than to lie dead in a ditch. What do I owe? I'm not afraid of hard work. You won't pay for that shoveling manure. I might have a better job for you. And it's not something any fool can do. If you prove to me you're a clever lad, I might trust you with something you could really make money from. What do you say? Well, what would you need from me? A trifle. Just to take something from someone and bring it to someone else. And not get caught while you're doing it. That sounds straightforward enough. Except for not get caught. Why would anyone want to catch me? Oh, don't worry. It's just a job like any other. Only this one requires, uh, let's say, the right moral disposition. Do corpses bother you? No honourable man should touch them. That's the executioner's job. Did you expect I'd give you a hoe and send you out to the fields? You can dig all right, but somewhere else. I want to know whether you're going to hide behind some stupid fucking scruples, or if you might be useful for more unconventional work. I was prepared for just about anything, but that's a bit much. But go on, tell me more. Listen. It's about this ring my mate Wojciech, the Kohelnitz Miller, had his eye on. Trouble is, they buried the ring by the gibbet along with the villain they hung while he was wearing it. Jesus Christ, you want me to dig up a corpse, take a ring from it and give it to your friend in Kohelnitz? There's nothing sacred to you. Money first, morals later. That fellow is dead, he won't miss it. Whatever bleeding heart came up with the idea that it's disrespectful to disturb a corpse never read the bible it's still a human body only it's missing a soul why be disgusted by something created by god i think i've already heard more than i need to know you've got the tongue of the devil himself if you tried hard enough i bet you could justify sodomy with a goat watch your mouth boy there's a shovel here around the mill somewhere if there's any problem come and see me and here's something on the side to make you dig better. Thanks. I'll need it. I can't believe I've come to this. Digging up corpses. Oh, and uh, watch out for the executioner and his hounds. They're pretty savage. And I don't just mean the dogs. You can just throw them some meat. The dogs, that is. But the executioner? Well, don't vex him. Good luck to you.
Have you eaten yet? Not yet. Well, try to eat something. A big lad like you needs his strength.
Where can I find a shovel? There's one right outside, leaning against the cart. Can you tell me... What about the Scallets, folk? God sent them to punish us for our sins. They don't work, they just idle around begging. And you want to keep a close eye on your belongings when they're around. I'll be glad to see the back of them. What do you think about everything that's happened? I don't concern myself with the doings of my betters. But this mess isn't good for business. Them two brothers should sort things out between themselves without dragging us into it. I don't give a damn who's king, but that usurper from Hungary has gone too far. Do you know anything about those Cumans? The heathen scum that Sigismund brought here. Why do you even ask? You've seen with your own two eyes what they're capable of. That's all. Hold the lock in the right hand and use it to feel out the tumble. In your left hand, you hold the blade and use it. Got it? Good. Now turn the whole lock with the blade, but don't stop holding the tumble in the hip. Otherwise, you're a dab hand, Hal. Make something out of you yet. But remember, this trunk's only for practice. With real locks, you have to watch out for the hip. Try it a few more times if you like. Then, good luck with the real thing.
Good luck to you. Well, you're a sight for sore eyes. Have you got a moment? I'd like to ask a few questions about scallops. I don't remember much. A all right. What do you want to know? How did you get me away from scallops? It wasn't easy. Sir Robard and his men helped load you on a wagon and we harnessed an old nag the bandits had left behind. The soldiers escorted us all the way here. God bless them. What about the bandits? Sir Robard and his men routed them. They killed the few, but the giant who attacked you fled, and Zibashek with him. They won't be safe in Scalitz for a while yet. Why would Zibashek do that? I never thought much of him, but banditry... He was always a nasty piece of work. Doesn't surprise me he joined them. If you knew what he did to me. Tell me. When those... Cumans, they call them. When the Cumans came, Zibishek pushed me out in front of them and fled. He sacrificed me to save his own hide. That bastard. Where's the sword I had? You had a sword? It's gone now. Those scum took everything, including your horse. I don't give a damn about the horse. I stole it anyway. But my father forged that sword for Sir Radzik. I promised father I'd take it to him. I have to get it back. Well, you can't. Just be thankful you're still alive. What happened to the other survivors from Scalitz? They sought refuge in Retay. And some of the Retay folk are none too happy about it. And Matthew, Fritz and Matthias? Johanka, did they make it? They're alive. I heard Matthias is at the stud farm in Merhoyed. Johanka is in Sassau, and Fritz and Matthew, well, you know them. They're up to no good somewhere. The only trouble they'll be in is of their own making. What about Sir Radzig? Sir Hanush, he's the Lord of Retay. He gave his lower castle to Sir Radzig, a place called Perkstein. Sir Hanush lives at the upper castle. The Scalitz folk have made camp in front of it. How did you get away from those Cumans? I thought I was finished. But I grabbed a dagger from one of them and... Wait. How do you know what happened to me? I don't. That's why I asked how you fled from Scalitz. No. You said with those Cumans... Did you see what happened? Were you there? I... I fled from the castle. I saw what was happening to you, but there were too many of them, and I... I didn't know what to do. I knew I couldn't fight them all. I'm so sorry. I understand. You made the sensible choice. No, but I, I wanted to... You don't need to say any more. Besides, I managed well enough on my own. I cut their throats. I'm sorry. I'm sure you are. I won't trouble you anymore. Let's leave it be. I'd like to know... So, how do you like it in Ratai? It's a big town with good strong walls, so I suppose we're safe here. And they took us in in our hour of need, but for how much longer? They'll grow tired of us soon enough. How are the Scalitz folk getting on? They're alive, that's the main thing. They have shelter, but they're just scraping by. 
Rattay's citizens aren't happy the town is full of beggars who don't look like leaving any time soon. That's all. What are you up to? How would you like to, um, I don't know, uh, come for a walk? A walk? I'd like that very much, but I can't right now, Hal. Give me some time to settle in, will you? If that's what you want. It's not you, Hal. It's just this isn't a good time. Good afternoon. What's life like in Ratai? This is a manorial town, and our lord hasn't got himself tangled up in affairs of state, so it's peaceful here. What kind of governor is Sir Hanish? Sir Hanish is a good lord. Things won't be the same when that wastrel Sir Hans takes over. That will be a sorry day. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? Well, they have it tough, no doubt. But there's not enough room for them here. How much longer will they be living on our streets? Nothing good will come of this. What if one of them's brought the plague with him? Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Terrible things. Horrible. I hear they skin people alive. And what they do to the women folk. Better take your own life than fall into their hands. Beasts they are. Animals. May the Lord watch over you.
Jesus Christ be praised. Farewell. Halt! Who are you and where are you going? I'm Henry, son of the Scalitz blacksmith. I'm going to see my liege, Sir Radzik Kabila of Dvoyets. Of course you are, lad. And I'm the Pope. What do you want from his lordship? And what makes you think he'll see you? I may not look the part, but I know about honor and duty. And mine is to tell Sir Radzik what happened to the sword he commissioned. All right, then. Go ahead. It'll be your skin if Sir Radzik isn't pleased. What did they expect me to walk into the middle of a battle? What battle? Sigismund Scott? Maybe so, but the land's still full of ruffians and... I'm no soldier. Besides, there's no need to go right now. Everything's well hidden, and it won't be sprouting legs and running off. And how are we supposed to live in the meantime? On dirt and air? It's not that bad. Not that bad? I woke up with a rat in my blanket. A rat! Hal! What are you doing here? I took you for dead. Oh, it's a long story. But what about you? How did you get out of Scalitz? You wouldn't believe it. A frightful storm broke that night, and Sigismund's heathens ran back to their camp. They never dreamed Sir Ratzik would use the storm as cover for our escape. The entire village slipped away as quiet as mice while no one watched. In the morning, when those bandits attacked, all they found was an empty castle with an old goat inside. I wish I could have seen their faces. So do I. You trick them nicely. See you later. for your house, the rakes and hoes for your field. What else do you need? Come on up and see. God be with you. May the Lord watch over you. What will it be? This looks good.
Fresh bread. Onions. Come and get All it. All that grows in the ground. Man cannot Fresh. live by bread alone. Come right up. But he can't live without it either. Heavens, lad. You're looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Last time I saw you, I thought you were ready for the priest. I'm feeling as good as new. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I want to learn to read. Who should I go and see? There's a retired scribe in Ushitz. He could teach you. Would you teach me more about alchemy? Certainly. I'd like to practice the basics. All right, but it'll cost you. Maybe another time. About that debt. It'll take me a while longer. I understand. There's no hurry. I'm sure you'll honor your debt. What's life like in Ratai? Life is good here. By God's mercy, the war's passed us by so far. There's nothing but them refugees to disturb the peace. What kind of governor is Sir Hanish? He's strict, but just. Thank God for him. He don't get mixed up in nothing like that, Sir Rudzig, so you don't see no one attacking us. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? Ha! Don't even talk to me about it. I wish that rabble was gone. I know they've met with misfortune, but here, they do nothing but thieve and make problems. Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Everywhere they go, they pillage, rape and slaughter. Or so the tales have it. Of course, all armies do that, but then barbarians take pleasure in it.
I've lost everything. My home, my family, my livelihood. Be merciful, good people. God be with you. Do you need anything? May the Lord watch over you. Did you find out what actually happened? What do I know? The Lords are at each other's throats, but it's us that has to suffer for it. Same as always. How does life in Ratai suit you? It'd be fine if we didn't have to sleep in hovels and beg for arms. And the bailiff is always on our backs, the bastard. But what can we do? We've got nowhere else to go. Goodbye. Good day to you. Can you show me how to repair armor and weapons better? Certainly. I'd like to practice the basics. All right, but it'll cost you. Maybe another time. Take care now. Take care now. Good evening. Good luck, Ben. My respects to you. Can you help me with training my dog? Certainly. Well, I'll think it over. Good luck to you.
A good day to you. What do you need? Greetings. What business have you? What are the rules of the tournament? Is there anything I should watch out for? Well, it's not a life or death struggle. We're not barbarians, after all. Anything in particular you'd like to know? Can I borrow weapons and armor here? Not only can you, you have to. This is about fighting skill, not about who's got the best kit. So you and your opponent get the same. There's equipment prepared for all the combatants. As soon as you sign up, you'll have armor and weapons prepared for you too. Thanks. That's all I need to know. May the Lord watch over you. See us tomorrow. I can't, I'm afraid. What do you want here? I see you survived. Aren't you observant?
Could that be the smith's son, Hal? On my soul, it is him. What are you doing here, lad? We thought you were done for. I must speak with Sir Radzik. Is he here? He's in the palace with Sir Hanush of Ratai. They're feasting in the knight's hall. What do you want with him? My father made him a sword. He, um, he asked me to deliver it to Sir Radzik. I don't see any sword. No. Bandits attacked me and stole it. I need to tell his lordship what happened. And then I'm going to find the sword. Of course you are, Hal. Good luck. Thanks. God be with you. God be with you.
Croy. Nothing on the left hand. The right? Oh shit, there's nothing there either. Where the fuck is that ring? <coughs> oh, a stench makes me want to puke. Peshek will pay for this. There was a corpse in the grave, but no ring. What the fuck is going on? Easy, Hal. Hold your horses. If the ring wasn't on the corpse, the executioner must have taken it before he buried the body. Oh, I can see where this is going. You want me to get the ring from the executioner? Clever lad. Only I wouldn't recommend talking to him about it. He's a bit touchy on the subject of robbing the dead. It'd be better to pinch it from his house. All right. I'll go and find that ring. It should be in a trunk somewhere in the house. And look here, Henry. Do you know how to get past the lock? Get past the lock? You mean jemmy it off with a crowbar? No, you don't. I mean the delicate, gentle art of opening it quietly and with sensitivity, like popping a young maiden's cherry. I have some experience. All right. I'm glad to hear you're not as clumsy as you look. Here's a lockpick for the job. Can you tell me something about the other millers? There's a couple of other fellows around here in my trade. Woodsek in Kohelnitz and Simon in Sasa. Tell me about Wojtek. He's young and hot-blooded with a short temper. But he's a fine fellow when you get to know him. His heart's in the right place and he's always willing to lend a helping hand. Unfortunately, he got himself into a feud with that usurer, the merchant Wolfram Pruder. A slimy bastard he is, and now they're sworn enemies. What about this Simon in Sassau? An odd one he is, a loner who don't talk much. But he's as dogged as a hunting hound once he gets his teeth into anything. He won't let go until he sees it through, even if he has to walk over dead bodies. Tell me something about yourself. There's nothing much to tell. I was born at the mill, I live here, and I'll surely die here. But before I do, I've plenty of work to do, and I hope I live to see peace in this land again. Good luck to you.
What?
What? This is nothing but an ordinary copper band. It's not worth a tin penny. My respects to you. I'll have that ring for you. Good. Nice to know you're the sort of lad I can trust with a job like that. Now run with the ring, the word set, the Miller and Kohelnitz. He'll have some work for you. And I'll have something for you soon, too. A clever fellow like you will never want for work. At the very least, I'll buy risky goods from you. I mean, the kind that used to belong to someone else and you can't sell to just anyone. You'll buy stolen goods from me. Oh, thanks for your trust. I'm sure that'll come in useful. Would you teach me something about the, uh, milling craft? Like how to get things out of strangers' purses into your own? Aye, why not? You're handy enough. No doubt you'll master it. Come behind the mill where we won't be seen. I'll see you later. I'll stand here and pretend I don't know you're there. You try sneaking up behind me without me seeing you and take something from my purse. First, you have to rummage in the purse. The longer you do it, the better chance you have of finding something valuable, but also of getting caught in the act. Once you've found something you want, you've got to pull it out carefully, but fast enough so I don't notice. Try stealing my dagger. It's there, mixed up with other things.
about you. If this was for real, I'm yelling for a guard. Try it again. That's the way. I hardly noticed you were there. I think you're ready to try it out for real. Best practice on drunks and sleeping folk, so you don't end up in jail before you even get started. Thanks, Pashek. You're welcome. But I'll be having that dagger back now. I'd like to try pickpocketing again. As you wish. I'll stand here and pretend I don't know you're there. You try sneaking up behind me without me seeing you. First, you have to rummage in the... Once you've found something, try stealing my dagger. I'll see you later. If this was for real, I'd be yelling for a guard. Try it again. That's the way. Best practice on drugs. Thanks, Pashek. You're welcome. I'd like to try pick... As you wish. I'll stand here. First, you have to, once you've found, try stealing my... I'll see you later. <laughs> That's the way. Best practice on... Thanks, Pashek. You're welcome. I've got some goods here whose owners might miss them. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. Bye.
náš totíček nebo stíček, kde jim pámbu nebesa ožírali své neba. Your graces, I have to tell you in all seriousness that this land of ours is in the shit. Deep fucking shit. Don't you agree? I might not have put it as eloquently as you, Hanush, but I've been driven out of my own castle, so I'm hardly going to disagree. Indeed. But Pirkstein is yours for as long as you need it. Room enough for your men and you here at Ratte, and I'm sure my ward won't have any objection to me lending you his castle. I'd be honoured. Perkstein is at your disposal as long as you wish, Your Grace. Just as well you have another castle at the other end of town, eh? <laughs> ah, at any rate, I'm beholden to you, Sir Hans, and to you, Sir Hanosh. Mm. I don't like to speak ill of your people, Sir Radzik, but, well... There's no love lost between the townsfolk and the refugees. There's been talk of criminality. No, they'll have to get used to it until the situation's resolved. But when will it be resolved? And what on God's earth is this war even about? I won't lie, sir. I don't understand it. You aren't alone, Father. I believe Sigismund's original intention was to persuade Wenceslas to accept the imperial crown and to leave the rule of Bohemia to him. Who could blame him? I know Wenceslas is a friend of yours, Radzig, but even you have to admit he brought it upon himself. I can't deny the king neglected affairs of state for other pursuits. There is a need for order in the land, but I don't think the lords who sided with Sigismund realized just what Hungarian order looks like. <laughs> Hungarian order? <laughs> what concerns me, sir, is how a good Christian could resort to such brutality. To give him his due, I don't think he expected the lords of this country to stand behind the king. But thanks to him, we're tearing ourselves apart, and now he has to get things under control. But why in God's name does he have to use those barbarians? Money is the root of all evil, young sir. Wars are costly, and this one has dragged on for a year. Sigismund ran out of coin for knights, so he recruited those whore sons that settled in Hungary. The less he pays, the more they make up for it with plunder. That's why he attacked us. He was after our silver. What are you doing? You have no business here. Clear off. Wait, it's Henry. Henry, who disappeared after I clearly ordered him to remain at Taunberg. I'm sorry, sir, but I had to bury my parents. Had to? 
Do you think you were the only man who lost someone there? But the others listened to their lord. And it wasn't just your own life you nearly threw away. So Robard and his men risked theirs to save you. I'm sorry, but I had to. No, oh, there you go. When you have to, you have to, Radzik. <laughs> your father was a remarkable man. And your mother, she was remarkable too. They deserved a Christian burial. Did you manage that at least? No. I was attacked by thieves. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for that girl. Girl? The miller's daughter, Teresa. <laughs> the miller's daughter saved you from the footpads? Well, there's a tale to tell your children. Uh, I owe her my life. She distracted them and then brought me to Ratai. But without Sir Robard, we'd both be dead. Oh, well, that's what I call a good woman. Hang on to that one, lad. Still, it's a great shame your parents are buried in unconsecrated ground. That means purgatory for them. Be quiet, friar. I didn't invite you here to eat me out of house and home and deliver a sermon while you were doing it. If you're so concerned, Father, maybe you should save the innocent souls of these fine Christians yourself. Go to Scalitz and consecrate their graves. I assure you, if you're killed by bandits, your soul will soar straight to heaven, as long as someone buries you in consecrated ground first. If there's anything left to bury, that plump carcass of yours would be quite a feast for the wolves and the crows. And one skeleton looks much like another, so how would we know which were your ordained bones or those of Sigismund's Tartars? Be that as it may, why have you come here? I must get your sword back. Sword? My sword hangs here at my side. No, the sword my father forged for you. One of those thieves stole it from me. They almost killed him and he already wants to go back. Takes after his father, I suppose. Lad. I've lost a castle, a village, silver mines, and a good half of my subjects. Why would I miss one sword? Because it's the last one my father forged, and I promised him I'd deliver it to you. I understand. I'd feel the same way. But prudence is the better part of valor, and a dead man keeps no promises. Aye. The woman had to save his fat from the fire, and now he wants revenge. What kind of fool are you, boy? He's no fool. Henry, you have courage. But you need training, arms, a horse. Or do you mean to beat this thief at dice? No, sir. Please, take me into your service and give me the chance to learn these things. The gall of him. Fled from the enemy, disobeyed your orders, duped Sir Divish, lost your sword, put Sir Robard in danger with his actions, and now he wants a promotion. Sir Capon's right. What you say is certainly true, except for fleeing the enemy. You would have run as well, believe me. Henry's earned some punishment, but how do you punish someone who's already lost everything, hmm? Courage and blind obedience are good qualities for a soldier, but a wise man also appreciates loyalty, perseverance, and determination. Besides, that was a fine sword that his father made. If he thinks he can get it back, I won't turn it down. My lord, he's a peasant. You can't make a squire of a peasant. Why not? Someone made a priest of a pig. He isn't a peasant, father. He's a blacksmith. And recent events have left me in need of his skills. So, you'd like to enter my service? Sir, I... Yes, I would. You won't regret it. <laughs> oh, I probably will. I'm doing this for your father, lad. Don't disappoint me. Oh, fortune has finally smiled on you today, lad. Make the most of it. Now that I think about it, Sir Hanush, the boy needs training and experience, and you need spear carriers. Hmm. That's true. The bailiff is always complaining about your people making trouble in the camp. Maybe one of their own among the guard might help. It might. In any event, it will prove valuable experience. <laughs> but let's be clear. You're the one paying him. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Bernard, see to his training, and then send him to the bailiff. Yes, sir. And don't spare him. You can rely on it, sir. Don't forget, Henry. Don't disappoint me. I won't, my lord.
people. Come up close and have a smell. Fresh bread. And pour yourself a bit of fresh milk to drink. Captain Bernard's not here. I should stop by during the day. I'll be with you. Do you know if there's anyone around here who could use my help? I've got other things on my mind. Take care now. What do you want from me now? God bless.
My respects to you. Do you know if there's anyone around here who could use my help? I've got other things on my mind. May the Lord watch over you. What do you want? Christ be praised. Can I ask? Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. I'm here for training. Yes, you're that boy Sir Radzik sent. Yes, that's me. Let's get to it then, since that's what Sir Radzik wishes. Uh, and because you've never held a sword in your hand before, we'll start with something simpler. Very well. Come with me and listen closely. I don't want to be repeating myself. May the Lord watch over you. So let's see what you're made of. Hold it properly and keep moving. Never stand still when your life depends on it. Right, good. Now try attacking. You've got to put your back into a good slash. No use waving the sword around like you're swatting flies. Go into the attack with your whole body. Try slashing from various sides to get used to it. Nice! All right! Good! Not bad! Very good! That pointy tip isn't for decoration. Try stabbing me with it a few times. Ah, that's it! Ah, that's it! Not bad. Uh, Very good. That will do. Slashing, stabbing, and movement are the foundations that you build everything else on. Now, let's try something more complicated. One strike, I can simply fend off. You mustn't give your opponent time to react. String your strikes together. As soon as you finish one, begin another. Strike, strike, strike. Nice. I don't have all day, boy. Not bad. All right. Now let's see how you do with defense. It's not hard to block a basic strike. Just watch out and move your sword into the path of the blow. No, that's not it. Ow. Wrong, damn it. Well done. Ah. All right. Ah. Ah. Very good. Damn. Not bad. Very well then. Let's see what you're made of, lad. Come at me and don't hold back. Uh. Uh. 
Good strike. enough. Got my work cut out, it seems. That's life. Let's try something more advanced. When in combat, keep an eye on the space between you and your opponent. That is your space. Try to attack from the side the opponent will find harder to block in time. If I'm holding the sword raised up, do an uppercut. If my sword is low, lunge. Let's try it. You strike a few times at the side where I'm not holding my sword. Very good. Very good. Ah, that's it. Ah, nice. Right, lesson two. Everything you've learned about blocking is wrong. When I cover, I can simply fend off your blows with my sword and gain control of the space between us. But it's better not to control just the space, but actually your opponent's weapon. Attack, and I'll show you. That will do. Now you. The trick is to stay in your stance. As soon as I start to attack, you block. The move knocks the blade aside. Ow. Very good. No, not like that. You mustn't hold a sword there. You have to move along with the attack. Again. Not bad. Not bad. Wrong, damn it! Good. Ah. Nice. Right, now we'll try it a little faster. Concentrate and block just at the moment I start attacking. I'll strike you from above each time so you can see it well. Ah. Good. Not bad. Nice. Good. Good, good. Now let's try it at full speed. You probably won't succeed, but that's normal at the start. You must train. Let's go. Henry. Greetings, Sir Hans. What brings you here? I was on my way when I noticed that you were entertaining Sir Abdix's 
esteemed guest. Not the same as holding a hammer, is it, blacksmith? It's Sir Radzig's orders. I know. I'm actually here to train at the archery range. My hand's grown heavy lately. You don't mind, do you, Bernard? Not at all, my lord. Good day to you, blacksmith's boy. Try not to hurt yourself. Where did we finish? Yeah, leading the opponent where you want him. There's one more way to evade a strike. You simply step aside, attack, and I'll show you. Move, quickly! All right, try it. It's important not to move too soon. I'll see where you're going and hit you. If the same will happen if you move too late. I'll attack slowly now. As you see me, raise the weapon, jump aside. It'll throw the opponent off a bit, and there's your chance. Not like that! Nice! No, that's not it! Nice! No! No! Again! No! Wrong! Again! Not bad! Fine. Now try it a little quicker. Try and get used to the rhythm. Never take your eyes off your opponent. You'll see a strike before it's even properly started. <laughs> ah, that's it! Very good! All right! And the last thing for today, a trick. You raise the sword to force your opponent to block, but then change the direction of the attack at the last moment, and the opponent won't even know what hit him. Try it. Draw back the weapon, then change the attack zone and strike, so I don't have time to react. I don't have all day, boy. Good. No, again. Nice. Nice. Well done. Good. Well, now, that wasn't too bad. Maybe we'll make a soldier of you after all. But don't get cocky. You have to train hard and persistently. You might have talent, but talent alone won't do. Practice. Whenever you've got nothing better to do and you're in the mood for it, you can come and train here with me. I can teach you something more when you're up to it. Don't leave yet. The Radzig also wanted me to teach you archery. Come with me.
Take care now. Let's see then. Take this bow, go and stand in position over there, and we can start. And another thing, put on this arm guard. Without it, you could flay your forearm with the bowstring, so be sure to wear it. Thank you, Captain. Save the thanks and get in position. Now concentrate. A bow ain't exactly the weapon of choice of a knight, but it can come in very handy. You've got two bandits coming at you from a distance. You shoot one in the eye, drop your bow, and draw your sword on the other. Emperor Charles, God rest him, encouraged his subjects to learn archery. He even organized contests in Prague. But you wouldn't have gotten far there. You're holding the thing like a piece of firewood. But enough talk. There's the target. Try and hit it. Draw the bow, aim, and release. Try to get a feel for the rhythm. Inhale on the draw. Hold your breath for a moment, and then release the string. No jerky movements, just let the string slide out of your fingers, as if you were about to draw it back more. It's all one movement, the arrow aiming at the target and flying at it. Shoot away. What you have there is a training bow. The arrow drops quickly. Once you've trained a bit, you can get yourself a better one, and then those arrows will fly so fast you won't see them. Don't forget the arm guard. Once you've mastered the bow a bit, you won't need it anymore. Well, that was awful. I didn't imagine a village yokel like you would have much skill, but you failed to meet even my low expectations. I don't know why you're wasting your time, Sevenar. Nothing will come of him anyway, and at the first sign of trouble, he'll run away like any other cowardly peasant. After all, he's done it before. What did you say? Calm down, boy. Keep in mind who you're talking to. A braggart who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. You've really done it. You'll go to the stocks for that. Calm yourself, Sir Bernard. If the blacksmith boy feels he can prove himself, then let him try. Do you think you can beat me? Well? Any time. Very well. If you defeat me, I'll give you my bow. If you lose, you'll have to pay up. Do you even have any coin? I have enough. Good. Then let's get to it. Didn't expect that. 
probably just wasn't your day, sir. I told you I have a heavy hand ever since I fell off that horse during the last hunt. What are you grinning about, boy? I think you owe me a little payback. How about a sword fight at the arena? If you like. Sir Hans, is this necessary? Sir Hanish has already had words about you fighting with your subjects. He explicitly told me. I know what he told you. You can just tell him I didn't listen to you. So what's it going to be, blacksmith? If we must. Excellent. Then let's go. Come on, then. Topper delay. This won't take long. Well, I did. Oh dear. <laughs> to cry.
You got the better of me this time, blacksmith. I must be having an off day. Are you all right, sir? Don't worry your mangy head about me, peasant. We'll see each other again soon enough. You can keep my bow. It's best years are behind it anyway. Hmm. You better hope his lordship hasn't taken it badly. He shouldn't have challenged me. Careful. You might be under Sir Radzig's protection, but you'd be wise to stay on good terms with the other noblemen, too. Now, go to the Rat House. The bailiff's waiting for you there. All right, Captain. Watch over you. Jesus Christ be praised. Master Bailiff, is there anything of interest going on here? Don't even talk to me. I'm to put myself under the Bailiff's command. Ah, so you're the young man Sir Radzig appointed? Yes. Very well. Sir Radzig asked me to test you a little, and as it happens, you've come at the right time. We've a few disputes to settle. It seems some of your former neighbors have been acting quite inappropriately. I was hoping having one of their own on the town watch might help sort things out. 
You can count on me, Bailiff. You're certainly bold. I like that. Have you been to see Captain Bernard? I have, and I have the bruises to prove it. The captain doesn't hold back. The harder the training, the easier the battle. Well, anyway, you're going to assist my town guard. Come to the church in the afternoon. Yaroslav the Watchman, Nightingale they call him, will wait for you there. He'll show you around the town and teach you a little about keeping the peace. And you need to stop by the armory to pick up some gear. Yes, Bailiff. Farewell.
Náš tatíček nebo štíček, daj jim pán Bůh nebe. If you're after something here, tell me. I was told to pick up a kit here. Name? Henry. And in fealty too? Sir Radzik Kobola. Hmm. Yes, I've got you. Well. Come on in, then. Make yourself at home, Henry. If my memory serves me, you're entitled to a helmet, a gambeson, and a club. That's all? You want a kiss and a hug as well? I mean equipment. It's quite enough for patrolling the town. You're there to stop trouble, not start it. Good day. What do you want?
Let's have a word about the price. Hmm. All right, so. Is this enough? That's still too much. This is a waste of time. Here I am. My name is Henry. We're supposed to go on patrol together? I see you're kitted out. Ready to get going. I'm Nightingale. Aren't you that lad the mill wench brought here on a cart? Teresa. Yes, she rescued me. She turned up with Captain Robot and his knights. All honour to the girl. She has bigger balls than most men. Tell me, how did you pay her back? Well, I am... Um... I thanked her. That's not much, is it? You should go and see her when you get a chance. So how did you end up in the service of the bailiff? I wanted to enter the service of Saradzik, but he sent me here to learn. And learn you will. You're lucky, lad. Sir Radzig must like you. Most lords would have just sent you on your way. Come with me, Henry. We'll patrol the town and then check on the taverns to make sure they lock up in the evening. I'm ready. Don't forget, I'm supposed to try you out and, with the help of God, teach you something. So I expect you to deal with any misconduct yourself. I'll make sure you don't do anything too stupid. Let's go. This is our church, St. Matthew's. It serves not only as the house of God, but as the crypt of the Lord's...